for adoption of the minutes. Um, April 15, is it? Yes. Yeah. The agenda says May 6th. So well, I'm correcting the agenda. Okay. April 15. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Been moved and seconded. Any uh, comments, discussion of corrections in the minutes of the 15th? No. Mm -hmm. Do we have a uh, roll call? No, Mr. Mutcher? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, Mr. Halliford? Yes. Motion to adopt it. The minutes are adopted. Mm -hmm. Uh, I would entertain a motion to approve payment of bills totaling $55,000 and 94 cents. Hmm. So move. Generally, you break those down before we, before we move just. <laughs> you want to make sure that they add up to 55000 mm -hmm. It just gives the audience a a brief idea of where the money is being spent. Oh, I thought you, okay, read them. I normally do, I forgot. A total of 55094 cents from the fire fund, $35,782.23. From the road fund, $3,558.95. From the general fund, $8,000. $30.26 from the cemetery, $7,629.50. Now do I hear a motion? Yes. I move that we pay the bills. Second. We moved and seconded. I have a quick question. Yes. Ms. Fox, sir? Yes. Hello. Generally, in the past, uh, when those uh, payments or when these Accounts are broken down by a road general at the cemetery. The road is broken down into road and bridge, gas tax, MVRP, or not MVRPC, um, progressive license. Okay. Is that all inclusive in this 3500 It is, but I can do the breakdown next time. Okay. I just wanted to. It does. It has all of those in that category, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any other discussion? No, then. We call a roll. We're to approve payment of bills in the amount of fifty-five thousand dollars and ninety-four cents, as enumerated. Ms. Moyer, yes. Mr. Moyer, yes. Mr. Hollister, yes. Motion to approve. Uh, we have some correspondence listed. Uh, update from the director of MVRPC. Uh, FEMA GO survey, survey, I did not see that. Who's handling that? It's, a, it's, it's not applicable to us. Okay, and really, FEMA GO is, is for um, like our, our various grants for federal stuff, but I have gotten that. Survey implied there was something to fill out. Uh, <coughs> invitation to the annual meeting or the summer meeting of the Partners for the Environment. I'll be attending that. Uh, bulletin from the Auditor of State. Uh, Hope Taft sent an invitation to the leadership float. I forget what date that is. But again, we'll try to get to that. Uh, Public meeting required instructions for preparing our tax budget due July 20th. Mm -hmm. we were kind of scrambling last year. Just thought I'd put it out there. Um, well, we could meet in, in June. Uh, letter of request. I think the deadline has already passed for support uh, of. It's a renewed grant application uh, supporting the Yellow Springs Clifton Bike Path Connector. Net account management quarterly report. Is that something you refer to in your report? 
Mary Cargan sent a letter uh, requesting a meeting about the waterfall fountain in, at the graveyard. Uh, Casey Brewer, letter of resignation. And I want to add on Alex Price from the Chamber of Commerce. Send this email regarding in kind donations for this reason. Uh, is that something you want to put on the agenda? Sure. Okay. I, yeah. <coughs> I see a few new faces, both some that will be regular. Uh, Gina, our new fiscal officer, has been on for a month now. And you'll be speaking later? Yes. Are there other, uh, this is relating to the National Burial Committee, are there other items from the public for the agenda? Chris, I mean, Alex, did you want to speak to the, tonight? Only if you guys, only you guys need me to, uh, it can wait until another meeting if, if you need it as well. So. Okay. Yeah, why don't we uh, hold that? Yeah, because I, um, I meant to write you back this we've been exchanging things. I'm still not understanding mm -hmm. everything. So. Sure. Yeah, it's just that the Chamber of Commerce has that suggested some partnerships. Uh, we'll, we'll have to uh, let the let the stew bubble. Uh, well, then let's move to. Oh, I want to. I want to clarify under this executive session for new business, uh, at the end of our last meeting we were talking about uh, initiatives for uh, firefighter retention and I asked that we roll that over to the next meeting and uh, I want to have that as an item of discussion which could be executive session or not, depending on what my colleagues feel. So that'll be under old business. Um, fire department report. Okay, uh, keep in mind three weeks, so numbers are kind of weird, especially EMS. So we had 53 EMS related calls, uh, 10 fire in mutual aid, we requested one for a fire. Uh, that was for our tanker for a brush fire. And then we received one for fire and three for EMS. Uh, brush 81 repairs, we're still waiting on parts. Once we get those in, then it'll get in the, in the loop. It will have to go to Springboro for, for the repair work. It can't be done, unfortunately, in our building. Excuse me. Uh, engine 82 was re returned to service. Uh, it got a substantial amount of work done to it. I'm still waiting to get the whole list of the breakdown of everything that was done so that I can get that in our software and, and document that as well as the cost. Um, Engine 81 is now down in the Spring Grove repair facility. Um, I'm figuring it's going to be about three weeks, but that is definitely in flux because um, that's definitely dependent on, on parts and that. Um, I did email, ask them about if they had any kind of an update today, but I didn't get a reply back to that. What's um, being done? It's a bunch. It's mostly pump work. Uh, a couple of electrical items are primarily pump stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I, there's probably going to be some cooler lines that need to be replaced. I'm not aware of anything that's like substantial like a <coughs> transmission like we have in engine 82. Mm -hmm. So if something like that comes up, I'm going to be pretty surprised. Um, it's mostly just the typical, uh, there, I do know there are a couple of valves that need to be rebuilt. That's very standard um, given our water quality and, and, and the age of the truck anyway. I think there were three that need to be rebuilt um, and some gauges. So all, all much the same as engine 82, just not a high class. Mm -hmm. Not that that stuff is actually cheap, of course. Um, 
I authorized uh, Lieutenants Klein and, and go to go to the Ohio Fire Chiefs Conference, um, which is a few months down the road. Uh, it's it's a few days, so they'll be there. There'll be some hotel expense and and that in there. Um, but that'll be great for you know primarily officer development, but particularly Georgia. Um, What's the one that's usually in Indianapolis? FDIC. Oh. Yeah. FDIC has gotten to be, frankly, too expensive to, to go to anymore. Even if you just want to go to the trade show, it's very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, uh, last couple of meetings, I've talked about the hardware that was needed to uh, get us on board with the, the uh, public safety information sharing network and VPN access. I'm now at a point where I need a motion to approve purchasing the hardware for that. So that is two VPN devices. Um, I do have to work with Navica so that we have some redundancy back to the data center. So they would essentially, what they'd be doing is providing us with two different fiber pathways to get back to the data center. Um, realistically, that's not ideal redundancy because if a telephone pole gets taken out, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, Amazon Web Service insists that there be a backup. So that is $6,000 in total for the two hardware devices. What is interesting about that is that is um, actually a lifetime thing. So if the equipment breaks, there are upgrades involved, the Amazon Web Services is completely on the, uh, is responsible for that um, after, after our initial purchase. And that's been double checked and verified with attorneys because we were all like, that's actually a really good financial deal. Um, so I need a motion to be able to authorize that. And I asked Gina for a PO on it as well. I'll make the motion. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded to authorize the purchase of VPN uh, devices, totaling a cost of $6,000. So on that project, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mr. Merger. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion to approve. Thank you. On that project, I'll keep you in the loop, but it's going to be moving. It'll move slow um, just because there's so much going on. The servers for all this have been set up and initialized in the cloud. So that's moving, but we are actually meeting uh, in via conference call every two weeks on this project now. Um, so very, very good communication, um, which is awesome because traditionally speaking, communication from some of this wasn't really good historically. And uh, um, that's due, honestly, that frankly, that's, that's due to the sheriff. Um, he's really affecting a lot of really good changes and uh, communication on this. Um, just because we've been talking about staffing and that, Lieutenant Klein went through, ran some numbers for me. Um, so in January, we had two, we had a total of 12 shifts where we only had two personnel that were on schedule. In February, that happened 13 times. And in March, that happened 18. And then April, that happened a total of 15 times. Um, so again, like I said, that's two people physically here working, as opposed to minimum staffing currently as it's authorized at three. Um, also, the expenditure list, I know I missed some expenditures on there, so this is a little shy of that. That is all that I have. Any questions? Um, I think I heard you say you're trying to get into the ESO system a way to track the costs of these repairs. That right. Making. Correct. And in the meantime, can we just jot them down, jot them down, or have files? And we have the information. We just don't have them digitized. No, I don't have the information yet. I'm waiting on the vendor. Once I have the information, it can go on ESO. Vendor from. Um, from the vendor doing the repairs. 
I mean, in general, over the year, we've had a lot of repairs for the last two years. Just, just asking you to yeah. help us keep track. Oh, no, I understand. So yeah. what I'm, um, so somewhere in this building that I cannot find, actually when we, uh, when Dave Eamon retired, he brought us binders that actually have all that. I can't find them, but they're in the building somewhere. Um, and my intent actually on that is actually to go back and see if we can take that and actually enter it in because I need to realistically be able to run reports off of it. You said D Dave Eamon, that's going back a number of years, not just the last two. Yes. But my point, right. my point is we, we spent several thousand dollars in the last couple of weeks. Or, I mean, mm -hmm. I, yeah. And we know now which vehicle that belongs to. Correct. Okay. So we and you know that also. The, the, the cost of how, how, we, how much it keep, costs to keep it on the road versus yeah. replacing. Yeah. Totally understand. And then, um, I don't, we, meeting three weeks ago, you said you might get us a copy of the staff satisfaction surveys. You said you only got four, oh, four totally or six of them back. I'm but sorry. I'd love to have them. And one other thing, I know it never really dawned on me, you, you, you've mentioned medical director before, and that just seems like this mysterious person who's our medical director, and I can't remember what the name is. Lynn Bailey. Lynn? Mm -hmm. Bailey? Yep. And who is she with? Premier Health. Premier Health, okay, just curious. Cool. That's all. Anything else for the fire department? Yeah, resident. Oh, yes. Oh, that's the most important thing. Could I get you yes. to yes. read it? Oh, good Lord. So we we have a new individual <coughs> that, uh, that I propose hiring. Oh. His name has an extra E on the end of it. Um, uh, this gentleman, his name is Shane Brock. Um, uh, Captain Harris and I interviewed him. He did very well during his interview. Um, so I'm proposing that he be hired full time, and that is listed as an emergency resolution. Um, so he would be a 36 hour employee, which, which would make him eligible for benefits. Uh, whereas continuing needs exist to maintain proper staffing and fire rescue, and whereas Shane Brock has acquired and demonstrated all necessary qualifications to serve in the capacity of part-time firefighter, EMT, or fire rescue department, whereas Chief Powell has recommended the appointment of this candidate, and whereas funds are available for the purpose within the fire department's operating budget, now for be it resolved that Shane Brock shall be appointed to the position of part-time firefighter EMT within the fire rescue department, effective May 6, pending verification of physical and uh, drug testing. Do you have a resolution number for this? 20. 20.4-20. Will our, I don't know who I'm asking this, Will our emergency resolutions be numbered differently than our normal resolutions? I do not have the answer to that question. Okay. Should, should they be historically? Uh, well, this is the very first one we've ever had. So I don't really know if they should be or not. I just kind of was asking our expert fiscal officer. She would know all these things. I'll, I'll check with her. But you know. Okay, well, let me know what she says. Um, I have moved. And I enthusiastically and gratefully second. I, I have one question. Mm -hmm. You spoke of full time and part time. Okay. You meet you technically this is part time, mm -hmm. but it's thirty six hours. Mm -hmm. okay. Thirty six hours full benefits vacation and sick days and yeah. not the whole enchilada, but a lot of it. Mm -hmm. I'm ready. Mm -hmm. Moving and seconding to adopt the emergency resolution twenty twenty four twenty, hiring of Miami County Fire Rescue Part Time employee 
same, is it pronounced Brock? Brock. Brock. Um, Mr. Mitchell. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes. Mr. Halliford. Yes. The resolution is adopted. Cemetery and road report. Even though Dan is back part time and I saw him in the office today, we are still counting on you, Chris, to report. Yeah, unfortunately, I had a slight, small medical issue that prevented him from coming to the meeting. He let me know before, after we met this afternoon. Um, Two quick things, the cemetery, there were two natural burials last, uh, one, two of them I think were last week. Um, I don't think there was the one, it might have been one week before, but that's neither here nor there. Is that okay? Um, Sorry, you're not. One in the prairie section, and I think one in the Elk Grove section. I think the prairie one was Thursday. Now he's going to get better than that. Um, they're beginning to lay out the dimensions for the exit lane. They, Brandon and Dan, I'm sorry, not, not somebody else, but for the exit uh, gravel drive that we have to put in in the Oak Road section to allow people to get out of there uh, safely and quickly. That's going to take a while, but I'll keep everybody up to The road part, um, unfortunately, of course, I guess this is kind of sanitary. One of our township mowers decided to eat its transmission this morning. Uh, forgot to put the milk on it or something. I don't know what the deal was, but <coughs> it is not happy. <clears throat> and transmissions for and repairs for equipment that, that's old, that, that is that old, uh, it's probably going to run uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of the value of the replacement. Uh, since this was just this morning, he doesn't have a piece of I don't know what it's going to cost yet. Hopefully, he can get a uh, loaner mower, because obviously, this is mowing season, uh, to hold this over till we either decide to fix it or replace it or get it. So that's that's in the mix at the moment. Uh, one other thing for the roads, and we talked about this somewhat long ago. <coughs> long ago but we had talked that um, uh, after our uh, uh, con uh, combined bid with the county went in, we were uh, like a day late in adding anything to the list and somewhere along the line and it's been so long that we forgot or didn't make the uh, deadline to, to have North River Road chip seal. Uh, we wanted to have that done but we ran out of time to put it in. And so uh, Dan contracted, contacted uh, Ray Hensley uh, who generally does the, the chip sealing anyway. I'm not sure whether they got this year's contract for it or not but they are going to um, do the work for the same cost that it would have been had they gotten the contract and we contracted with them. Uh, that sounds confusing. That is, sorry. They'll, they'll charge the rate that the county ends up paying somebody, right? whether it's them or not. Right. Okay. That was back at the March 4th meeting. At the March 4th meeting. Uh, so their quote to do North River from the county line um, from 72 to the county line is $16,095 to chip seal it. Um, we have, uh, even considering the 56 or 57,000 that it's going to cost us to uh, blacktop Carroll and Lamont, uh, we would have uh, this additional money even notwithstanding a repair and lawnmower uh, available to us to do the work. So let's keep that in mind. We also talked a little bit later than that about fog sealing Harbison Road. Um, it was felt that uh, even though a lot of work has been put into Harbison over the last 10 years, uh, uh, mobile chip seals, uh, there's been half of it that was that was uh, blacktop. There was half of it that had a full depth foundation 
a new foundation in the bug and, uh, and double chip seal on top of that. And, and it's been very serviceable, but it, it, it's beginning to show uh, alligator cracking uh, along the along the, the edges. Uh, and that's the worst part of some things to start cracking because that's generally the weakest because it hasn't been compacted with all the traffic. And so those will tend to break, those edges will tend to break earlier than anything else. I just thought it would be, you know, a, a little bit of a safety uh, valve to, to uh, fog seal those and get some material into those cracks uh, to try and hold them until, you know, maybe we'll chip seal the whole thing again in you know, a couple of years, I don't know. But in general, a lot of it's in pretty good shape, but there are a lot of patches along the edges that I feel we need to do. So um, I don't know what that ends up, ends up being. It's going to be 21, 5, 22 in change. Um, and I would make the motion that we uh, have this uh, repair work done this year by the Ray Hensley group. Uh, uh, which repair work again? The chip ceiling on North River Road and the fog ceiling on Harbison Road. That's 21,500 some change? Mm -hmm. The second one is 16 for the first, or is that 21 total? 21 total. 21 total, thank you. I move that we take care of the streets and appropriate the money. Here's oh, Mr. Richard Harden. Second. 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 You made the motion correct. Yes. Been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Please call the roll. Uh, so moved and seconded to um, handle the repairs as enumerated for an expense of twenty-one thousand five hundred to twenty-two um, expenditure. Uh, Mr. Butcher. Yes. Ms. Meyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Motion to approve. Any other cemetery or road items? No. Fiscal officer's report. Yes, there was a, there was a I'm sorry, there was a note of report yeah. from the National Bureau. Excuse me. How rude yes, can yes. I be? Let me start off with saying what we have done up there. Sure. sure. Um, coming from the garden center on the north, Big row of beautiful honey locust trees are sending their children out to invade our space, and we we took out a lot of them, and they were quite easy. And the ones we took out last year, um, they had not returned much, so I think we, we got a handle on that. Um, yeah, the honey locust has huge thorns. The baby ones that we took out were had baby thorns, <laughs> um, and then there are a couple of patches of poison hemlock popping up, which our hero over here is going to put a spacesuit on and go get them. However, last you took out a lot of hemlock last year, yeah. and it looks like we had positive results of that. Yeah. 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 And um, there's a lot of, uh, I'll just tell them, you could. we had made progress on narrowing the roads, and then Dan got hurt, and. People were filling in, and Brandon was overwhelmed. There are, part, there are parts of the roads now, Chris, that are 16 feet. Do you know how much they were originally plot, plotted to be? I thought it was 10. But I'm talking about the roads that you go through the prairie. It's kind of like a... I think it was somewhere around 10 or 12, you know. Yeah, so some of them are very much to 16 feet now. So we're, our prairie is, is narrowing, and then the, the, the property owners on the other side is getting their lawnmower coming. Everybody wants to get just a few more inches, and then, um, so I, we're a little concerned about that. And um, I think the big thing. side. Now we're talking this is the south it? edge, or well, this is you know the the paths that weave in and out. They're all widening. But where you're talking about property owner. Oh yeah, the, the people on the um, gardens, the north side, I okay. think are, are the gardens. Then. The garden center. Yeah. Is enthusiastically mowing too, unless that's us. I don't know if they're mowing better or us. And um, so, and then, then there are areas where invasives are coming in, and and so we, we had had a meeting last year with um, that guy from 
ODNR, Ohio Department of Natural Resources, who showed us how we might solarize, mow and solarize parts of it. You know, keep it mowed about halfway through the summer, put down some plastic, and just, you know, solarize, kill it, and then reseed in the fall. And so we, we marked off some places this year, areas this year that we'll, we'll go in there strategically mow, and then we're hoping our crews could continue to mow it until <coughs> about midsummer, and then we'll solarize it and reseed it so we can keep this prairie going. Um, be reseeding it as prairie. With the original, with, with a mix that's very close to the original mix. And, I think um, it's the biggest thing we've seen is <coughs> prairies take management. You know, you would think, oh, they're just going <coughs> to grow up year after year. It's just not true. Um, we've been, my wife and I have been involved since, uh, it'll be four years next month that our son was buried there. And uh, we were so grateful that there was a, a place where the um, Lakota traditions that, that Martin was following that we could have natural burials. And there's a lot of people who have already signed on to, to be buried there, my wife and I included. So we have an investment um, in keeping it a prairie as best we can. Um, and a couple of things we've noticed over the years is the um, burial process sometimes can really include a large area. And we'd like some discussion uh, from the board at some point about how do we how do we maybe bury people in the in the natural burial area just like we do in the other cemeteries because the compaction and the scraping off of the uh, prairie plants they all have to be reseeded after a burial um, you know you let the the ground settle. And uh, we've already begun trying some things like seeding in certain areas. We're seeing some good results, but um, what we would like to do is reduce the, the, the footprint of the burial to be very similar to what do they do in the front cemetery, where it's very clean, it's, it's put on a truck and brought back in. And in the plot size, when you say footprint, the, no, the actual coffin size, yeah. Um, they do it up in the front part. It's very clean. They carry the dirt away. People have their ceremonies. And when it's time to bring the dirt back, they bring it back. And it's, you know, you can hardly know they were there. Whereas in the natural burial, they're moving a lot of, of dirt different ways and scraping. <coughs> And, and so we'd like, we'd like some consideration. Um, the natural burial cost is the same as the other areas of the cemetery. So it's not adding, uh, you know, it'll add some, some expense until you look at what you need to do to bring a prairie back. It's gonna be a lot cheaper to not uh, change the, you know, the uh, kill the plant life off and then have to restore it because it takes years for those prairie plants to get their roots down and recover from, from you know, whatever is happening. So in some cases, the dirt again is being, instead of put on a truck, it's being put someplace and then right next to it and with a bigger foot. For the natural burial, it's just put right next to it. And then it's scraped back in and sometimes the plants are being scraped out. Now there has been some improvement uh, in that we we went to a couple natural burial um, area places in the area, and they suggested putting plywood down, put the dirt on the plywood that way. When you're scraping, you haven't eliminated the um, the plants. You haven't you haven't shaved them off at the ground level, and so we we're seeing some success with that. But we'd like to. Try the um, the approach of just the coffin size and move the dirt out until after the ceremony, and then move it back in. Uh, you're still going to have humps; it has to settle. But 
that would be a so much easier to take care of um, in terms of that. Um, have we talked to Dan or Brandon about these details? Yeah, Dan, you know, and then he's, you know, um, uh, not been there as, as available. Um, so, yeah, we, we would like to sort of have time with them to talk about how can we do this more effectively. Yeah. Um, we're also wondering about having some kind of part-time person who knows that the big thing we're finding about prairies is people don't know much about them. You know, um, the bear, natural burial here was a real um, progressive thing to have happened. I mean, and again, uh, my family's so grateful that it was there. Um, but it takes management. And even back when Native Americans were here managing their prairies so that buffalo could come. They were burning off, they were doing things to keep trees out. Um, so we, you know, we would offer maybe, maybe along with the volunteer, somebody maybe could invest 10 hours a month or something like that, be paid to, to monitor the whole cemetery, the, the whole natural cemetery. And with the help of volunteers, um, go in and, and get those areas. Um, as, as Marilyn said, you know, the, the hemlock, um, I spent just an afternoon out there in a suit, you know, because it's poisonous. And uh, very few plants have come back. Um, and, and we're seeing that with the locusts as well. That is very few hemlock. Yeah. And locusts. Yeah. But as you move out these invasives, that gives the prairie opportunity to dig in even more. Yeah. Um, I just got a couple more things. Um, in terms of what will happen, you know, uh, down the road with, with the cemetery, um, it's intended to be a prairie. So if we get some management in place, um, you know, this is intended to go on, like at most cemeteries, till the when, the end of time, whatever. Um, so we feel maybe an endowment would be a good idea, uh, especially with um, not knowing what's gonna happen down the road. Uh, most cemeteries, many cemeteries have endowments uh, so that something unexpected happens down the road um, they, they have some financial uh, foundation to back up on. Um, so we would propose maybe 5% of, you know, sales, burial sales and, and um, work uh, be put into an uh, endowment created uh, for the future, for the future of the, and it wouldn't just be the natural burial cemetery, they, you know, we recognize different people prefer different ways of burial. So, um, but it would be good for the cemetery in general, for all the cemeteries. Um, and then finally, uh, with the Oak Grove, the um, price is really good on the Oak Grove. And I, as we talked about this at the committee meeting last week, the, um, uh, Part of how we could pay for an endowment could, you know, could also be that we raise the price on the Oak Grove area to be more comparable to the Prairie Natural Burial. Um, I don't know. In our discussions, we kind of felt there, the labor-wise, it's not going to be that much different between those two cemeteries, the Oak Grove and the, the Natural Burial. So, so those are some thoughts coming out of our advisory committee. And um, we hope you guys have some discussions on this and <coughs> get back to you in another time. So, thank you. Could I ask you to give your name for this for the record? Uh, Jerome. Borchers. I'm sorry? Jerome Borchers. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I'm like, yeah, sounds... I'm like, share. Mr. Chair.
Yes. May I respond to a couple of these before I forget them all? <laughs> Jerome, you might have to back up on some of these. Okay. Um, the the areas that you're that you're earmarking for restoration or reseeding, um, who would are you going to hire somebody to receive that? So, part of our proposal is to try to find somebody who can uh, maybe ten hours a month. Um, you know, somebody there are people around town who know about prairies. No, I'm sorry. I'm talking about specifically reseeding the area that you're going to solarize. Yeah, I mean, uh, I was out there reseeding in February. Was it February when we reseeded? Um, it's not a hard job. I mean, I. So you're broadcasting. Yeah. Uh, broadcasting is not the way to put prairies in. You have to drill them. Uh, I mean, we've tried that umpteen times to broadcast yeah. bare spots, and it just won't, won't come back up. What does drilling look like? What is it's where you take a piece of equipment and it's it's got a spike, uh, it's got a tumbler and it's okay. full of spikes and those spikes are fed uh, prairie gr prairie grass seed which is extremely light. That's one of the reasons that it's not it doesn't grow well is because it just blows around because yeah. it is extremely light uh, and the the spike presses down into the ground and the seed or two. You say a, tum a roller or tumbler? Mm -hmm. Do we have that piece of equipment? No, we don't. We rented it the first time we did it. Uh, and it was a... Did you mix the seed with any kind of... No, you... We what did we mix the seed with last time? Was it we, we planted rye yeah. before we planted the prairie grass. The idea is the rye establishes its, itself quickly and, and gives a little a little forest underneath the, you know, the ground for to protect the prairie seed so when it comes up. And, and I've the, done... The rye's only good for one year. We did, for example, on my son's grave, um, I did all the, you know, leveling and, and we, did, we used a hard rake on that before seeding and then stomped on it, walked every bit of it. And we had really good results from that. Um, well, I guess if you're committing to yeah, but breaking, out, big areas. breaking out an, air, uh, an acre or two, yeah. you know, whatever size you're talking about, well, reseeding. That won't be that big at a time, <laughs> right? No. Although if we reseed some of the, the path that's now 16 feet and try to reclaim yeah. some of that, that might be. Yeah, I mean, there's rototillers that, that could handle the edge, edging for the, where the grass is coming in. And then, you know, we've done it with a hard rake and then stomp on it and had good results. Well, we but pretty si big sized places, like maybe from here to the wall, one of them yeah. is like pretty big. So I, you're recommending but them. But if there's equipment that, you know, could facilitate uh, better seating, well, I businesses think that we do need to look at that. Living. That's, that's why I'm concerned. I mean, businesses that do it. Okay. Companies that, that seed for that's what their business is, as opposed you know, to we haven't, trying to broadcast it. We haven't talked to any businesses. Just I think we have to do. And that sounds yeah. great. And to me, yeah. And based on my little experience, where we had the had the original ground turned and then just did, just did, just, and then planted, uh, biggest mistake you could ever make because we didn't cover it. Uh, to, to sanitize the soil. You just mentioned road tilling the edge. Well, if that's the same thing as disking in and small, you're just going to pull that weed seed right up. Uh, yeah. Right up again. Oh, yeah, then you have to solarize it. Mm -hmm. And they do make plastic, you know, like three feet wide mm -hmm. that you could do a 50 foot strip fairly, you know, in an afternoon. Mm -hmm. And they would stay for about a month or six weeks or yeah. something. And we, we learned it was clear plastic, not black plastic. And also, we were told to put prairie restoration signs up so people had more romantic ideas about it than if we didn't have those. So yeah, I think right. it's, it's one of the reasons we're requesting uh, trying out uh, someone who's more knowledgeable in, with prairies. Mm -hmm. um, because as we visited different mm -hmm. cemeteries, we're finding, yeah, people have different perspectives on what to do. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah. 
Um, keeping on that subject, would your committee be willing to, uh, if, if the board agreed, to recruit this part-time person and oversee him or her? I think the committee would be thrilled to do that. Thrilled to do it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I would, as a board member, make a motion that um, authorizes the National Burial Committee to uh, contract with someone to do whatever work they're talking about for 10, 10 hours a month doesn't sound like a whole lot of time. We know that. And we thought we wanted to start small. So. <laughs> <laughs> now, do you want to put a cap on your authorization? Uh, no, not at this point, simply because I don't think they know what they're looking at out in the market. Yeah, that's true. You know, they, they, they're not going to, I don't believe they're going to commit to a, a contract or, or a, a committal to hire somebody without running the bias, so. Okay. So what, what is your motion again? Authorize the Natural Burial, my Township Natural Burial Commission to recruit and and retain a uh, a part-time cemetery manager person. <laughs> Cindy, is that long enough? I'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> is there a second? I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. It's been moved and seconded to authorize the Council Burial Committee to recruit and oversee a part-time I'm going to tell you, manager. There you go. Might want to put natural in there. Yeah, natural, yes. <laughs> uh, Mr. Richard. Yes. This one. Yes, Mr. Hollis. Yes. Motion is approved. In regards to your endowment question uh, idea, uh, always a wonderful idea. Uh, being on the, don't get all excited, everybody, on the Ohio Cemetery Resolution Dispute Commission of the state of Ohio, um, that's that's 90 percent of what we hear is is the lack of maintenance in the cemetery and the reason being because the cemetery is old is is sold and so it doesn't have a source of income and doesn't have a well-established endowment fortunately for us being a township cemetery and a political subdivision of the state of ohio our finances are backed by the full faith and credit of the Ohio State, of the state of Ohio Treasury. So the state of Ohio would have to go bankrupt before Miami Township would not have funds available to them for any cemetery work that was necessary in the future. It, it, it came down to the, all the cemeteries being, or any parts of the cemeteries being totally filled, which won't be for probably 200 years of the amount of cemeteries that we've got now. Um, it, it, it would then be the state's responsibility to come in and financially support uh, whatever we need to have done. So without voter input, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We also can. Uh, I want to say this in public. We can uh, have a property tax to support the cemetery. Well, you certainly could. <laughs> You can go ahead, go ahead, Don. Go for that. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not proposing yeah. that. I just know that the townships do that. Yes, they do. But each May. That's why we have worked, I think, very diligently in expanding our available base of, of options for people to to uh, uh, bury their loved ones or to, or not bury them, but you know whichever and how they can can choose to do that. And I believe at the moment we've got a pretty good selection, as it were, of, of, of ways to doing that. And that's reflected by, um, and I don't have the exact numbers, but, but we are selling substantially more natural burial uh, plots than graves than we are traditional graves. Uh, not substantially, but, but I think the majority of them are at this point. Um, now, the burials that are done are done in graves that have already previously been, been purchases. It's not an as the subject. So I'm not bringing those into the equation. I'm getting up far afield. The, the last thing I think that you brought up and, and, and talked about is the, 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 the discrepancy or lack of discrepancy in the Oak Grove price, pricing versus the prairie grass cemetery. So, so what is the Oak Tree price? I, I just remember seeing it on 
the website. A, a five by ten parade <coughs> is seven hundred fifty dollars versus a prairie grave, which is ten by twenty, exactly double, is fifteen hundred. Okay. So you're getting two graves for fifteen hundred versus one grave for half of it and half the size. Mm -hmm. But we haven't been selling ours as two until recently. We said uh, the family member. No, we have <coughs> But that's that's. I mean, that's the reality of it. Is five by ten versus mm -hmm. ten by twenty. Well, your two suggestions financially were increase Oak Grove and uh, plan to establish an endowment because of the long-term uncertainty of funding. Yeah. It's not so, we don't have to act right now, but it would be, it would be interesting to see. I mean, my to project, my impression is that we're selling more lots, plots, than we're burying at this point. And that that will shift at some point when the you know, aging demographic is getting ready mm -hmm. for burials, or whether it's five years from now or in two months, because grandma's getting sick. Uh, and with demographic shift in I don't know how many years, 20 years, uh, it may be very different and we're burying more people and that is the cost will be higher than the income from sale. But as I was mentioning, being a political subject in the state of Ohio, we cannot there's, there's no way we will not be able to provide graves, number one, we can take that by end of the domain, we had to, we couldn't be landlocked in mm -hmm. um, for expansion, and number two, financially, the state is responsible for the, the debts of uh, the township. Uh, if, if it it is the cemetery debts. Well, sure, any, any debts, I mean. All our debts. Well, yeah, if, if we were unable to, and you, you can read those in the papers every once in a while, <laughs> of townships that can't pay their bills, and the state has to come in and uh, take over the, you know, the county. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> yeah, keep that in mind. So anyway, I think that was most of your points. Yeah, no, thank you. Okay. I'm glad we could discuss it. Well, I am so happy that you came this evening and, and brought those uh, brought those items up. This is okay. Okay. And I wish you good luck in finding this person. Well, person, well, thanks for approving that. Give him five hours. Work. Give him five hours and you know, give two people five hours a month each. <laughs> then they got a staff. Anything else? I, I tried to shut down cemeteries already once. <laughs> uh, anything further? Thanks, Jerome. Mm -hmm. And Marilyn. Fiscal officers report. So I believe you should have a resolution in front of you. Which we're labeling 19, 224-19. Do you want to have a <coughs> copy to read? Whereas, it is an ongoing process to accurately appropriate funds according to the needs of the township. Now, therefore, the trustees authorize amending the following appropriations. Fire fund, this is um, when we were trying to do some bills after the last meeting, so it's road salaries increased by 2,000, and um, both out of fire fund, OPNF increasing by 5,500. And I know something about, oh, we got no enforcement, so. Oh, yeah. I'll move adoption of uh, 2024 uh, 19. I'll <laughs> second. Discussion? Yeah, I just don't want you to be discouraged. On, um, you might think, we're this early and we're already moving money in the pension fund? 
when we, when Dunny had the great idea to put all the pensions in 2181 and everything else in, in 2191, we, did, we didn't label it pension, we labeled it, it was labeled other. So Margaret, not knowing, came and said, oh my God, there's no money for pensions and she didn't recognize it. So she made that move so she could pay that bill that day, but that's the only reason it had to happen. And I, I, and I'll look into why we're moving money into road salaries. She said there was nothing in that column. Could it be that, wait, wait, why 2191 is their road salaries anyway? That's yeah, a good question. I I'm totally confused about that. Um, um, this happened right at the last meeting, so I'm trying to remember what bill we were trying to pay. Um, because that's the fire fund. I will look. Yeah. yeah. And the road is yeah. Maybe the road is a typo. I don't see a line for road salaries. Yeah. In 2191, I hope not. No, no. I mean, the only time we used to do that in the past was when the road department um, many months ago served serviced our trucks to an extent, which we don't do anymore. I will offer, I will give clarification for that. Cool. Well, then is it proper to vote on it? Authorizing it when we know we're going to change it? I think we should go ahead to well, if authorize you, it. I think we're you, signing those checks. If you, so. paid, it, yeah, if you paid it. <coughs> yeah, and, I, and I, I was talking to you, I never knew why we, um, Pay, pay bills is, is and authorize it. Emergency and resolution 2024 19. What about it? I just wondered. It's it was. I don't have a copy of it. Yes. It's 19. Okay. Yes. But maybe I took your copy. Yes, it is. Is it labeled emergency? We didn't label it that way. We just did an amendment of permanent appropriation. So then it's not an emergency <laughs> resolution. It's just 2024 19 regular. We'll have, to, we'll have to work that out, Mr. Chair. Good movement, second to adopt resolution 2024 19, amendment of permanent appropriations as enumerated, but to be clarified. Yes, thank you. Uh, Mr. Wood. Yes. Ms. Moyer. Yes. Mr. Hollister. Yes. Resolution is adopted. And I don't have anything else in particular, just that uh, month in, we're on a stall on a learning curve, but I'm hopefully getting more knowledgeable about the accounting all the time. So thank you for your, your patience and uh, no, it's great. letting me know things as we go. Thanks for communicating well. Appreciate it. Glad you're on board. about new people on board. We have uh, zoning inspector's report, Sherry Smith. Hi, yes. Um, okay, so I have a few things for you. I think I shared by email the contract uh, with uh, GIS for the county. Um, I would love to have my township zoning listed on the website. Um, like that other townships have been doing it recently and it's very helpful um, for lots of reasons um, mostly because people typically look at the website and they'll see the way it's taxed and think oh it, well it's residential but it may be agriculture or it may say commercial because the building may be commercial but it may be a residential or agricultural property so saves a lot of confusion I'd love to see it, it takes a little bit of process to get everything signed. Uh, regional planning holds, like, they kind of facilitate the contract. Um, it has to be approved by the trustees. Then it'll be signed by um, all the various departments. In the Everybody. County. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just about. Every single department in the county. And then they'll put it on the, um, there's no cost to it. And then they just get our zoning just map from regional planning and they'll list it on, on the website. Like when you look so. up any particular parcel. Yep, it's, it's listed like um, when you go on the parcel viewer, 
on the left, there, there's all the things. Very bottom it says zoning right now. It currently says NA, but if approved, it would just it would say the actual district, which is very helpful. So I would love it if you guys would. Um, I would so move that we enter into contract with um, regional planning for the service of zoning definition per parcel in Miami Township. Great. A second. And I will um, take care of, I'll, I'll forward that on to the um, regional planning and, and then I'll take care of getting all the signatures. So, okay. Do we, should we, okay, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. We don't do that. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead, well, yeah, we continue the discussion. Don't we want a clean copy of the contract with the words Miami Township as yes. opposed to Cedarville Township? And yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll provide a clean copy. Um, okay, yeah. Do you mind making those updates no. on that? Or? No. Okay. Okay, or I could do it or... Because we need to sign it, so... Correct. Mm -hmm. Might as well do it before we okay. sign it. Okay, great. It's been moved and seconded. Anything else on that? Please call the roll. Um, moved and seconded to sign the contract for GIS County. Parcel mm -hmm. listing, is that sufficient explanation? GIS zoning listing. Zoning, zoning yeah. listing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Mutra. Yes. Ms. Morris. Yes. Mr. Holly. Yes. Uh, okay. <coughs> Great, thank you. Um, and then the second thing I had on my list here is zoning fees. So, um, and I talked a little bit with Marilyn and Denise about this. Denise was charging $25 for the zoning permit. I think is you know reasonable like for fence things like that. Um, before that, it was just basic zoning permit was ten dollars plus percentage of the cost. Mm -hmm. um, I wondered if you would entertain a flat fee. Um, I just think that's cleaner and easier. Um, a, a, like other townships I work for have had you know one fee for an addition, accessory building. Uh, pool, fence, things like that of like $25, $50, and then a house permit would be $100 um, just because there's a little bit more work mm -hmm. that involved in that on my part when, when someone builds a new house. So I didn't know how you felt about that. I just feel like that's easier, uh, so cleaner. Cur currently, <coughs> you're saying that Denise was just was charging flat $25? Yeah. Prior to that, it was $10 plus a percentage of the estimated cost. Correct. And what but are you suggesting? A flat rate. I would like, I think $50, well, okay, so for a fence, $50 is a lot. Um, but for an accessory building, you know, someone who's building a barn, I think $50 is, is reasonable. Um, and then a house, $100, which, a lot of your, I have your um, older list of fees here, and um, where did you get that? Where did I get that? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <I'm sorry. laughs> uh, it was on the the it was on the computer stuff Denise had. It's from 2016. Yeah. So, it, it, your basic permit was ten dollars plus point uh, zero five percent of the cost. Which I just think that's hard to figure. Sometimes when people come to me, they don't even have the cost. Yeah. Um, and how do we know what they're giving us is accurate? Mm -hmm. I, I just, I'm not, I'm not crazy about that idea. Like an appeal, a zoning appeal is $100. Conditional use is $150. PDs. I, I, I made those up. Yeah, no, but these I, are great. No, what I mean is that I redid all the applications, oh. and I was good at the application part, but I kind of... Uh, no, those are those are great. Those so are all very... Change. No, those are... Is reasonable for those those are great. Those are all very <coughs> reasonable and, and um, pretty much falls in line the same of, as um, um, other townships okay. in the county. I would just like to see a flat rate for the other permits, whether it be a house or accessory building or... Or um, fence, pool, that type of thing. So I don't know what you think about that. Or well, I think a motion that we adopt the zoning inspector's recommended pricing changes for 
permits. Okay. I, I think 100 for a house is, is reasonable. And how, what do you think about the uh, like for all the other permits, whether it be a barn, pool, fence? First, I'll second. So I'm sorry. I got it. I, uh, and I think you're all over it, and I think you're thinking it through, and I'm comfortable with your judgment. The others are. Oh, well, I think we should have the specific numbers. Um, oh, okay. I, I think you're right that a fence doesn't seem as, uh, yeah. of course, it could have very different size fences. Sure, lengths. yeah. Lengths. Um, and then, you know, a little pool, a big pool. Mm -hmm. Well, she mentioned 50 for virtually everything else. Right? Yeah, yeah. I think that's, that's, Pretty standard as it. in Cedarville. That's what they do. Even for a fence. Well, no, a house is a hundred, and then um, barn. Everything else there's is twenty five currently. We're moving to fifty. Um, so. So you think even though you exclaimed that maybe fifty was too much for a fence? You well, it just depends. It is and it isn't. There's not very many of those either. Uh, to be honest. Like, Except for today. Yeah. Um, no, I think 50 is, is reasonable for any other, you know, for someone who's doing an addition. Um, typically, fences are also put in the same time as a pool. So $50 for a pool slash fence permit, um, I think is very reasonable. So what, I, what is it not think the last time we put a fence permit out? Today. Okay. <laughs> Beyond that. Beyond that. Beyond that. I don't know. <laughs> they, they're not very. No, they yeah. are not. Very. It's typically combined with a pool. Hmm. Um, but it wasn't out at William and Mary Court, was it? Because yeah. somebody called West. I thought a couple of people called for fences, and Swinger told them they didn't need a permit, but I mean, oh. maybe that didn't really happen. I don't know. Probably didn't happen. Unless they were a re if, if you're taking an old fence down and putting up a new fence, you wouldn't. Okay. Got it. Uh, so, what does what does the motion say in terms? Of, okay. It says hundred dollars. The motion was to abide by the zoning officer's recommendations. If you what? want specifics, I don't know what those are. Well, I think are. we need to repeat the specifics. So fifty dollars for a, um, the basic permit, meaning uh, fences, pools. Accessory buildings or additions, $100 for new construction of the home. Well, it's been clarified. Any other discussion? No, no. No. It's been moved and seconded to um, adopt zoning fees as recommended by the zoning officer, uh, $50 for a basic. We have hundred dollars per house in the construction. That. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. um, Mr. Moocher. Yes. Ms. Moore. Yes, Mr. Allison. Yes. Motion to approve. Okay. Next on my list, I have um, I I've been in contact with Brian Corey uh, with the Zoning Commission. Uh, we have a meeting coming up in June. I attended the regional planning meeting. Um, Last week, two weeks ago, last week. Uh, oh, that was just last week. Mm -hmm. Feels like three weeks ago. Anyhow, um, they approved the one um, document. So, the solar one. Yes, the personal solar. Mm -hmm. um, they tabled the um, permit, the temporary, temporary use, use mm -hmm. permit, um, with some recommendations of considering considering they, they didn't like the language that said um, one no more than two days permitted uh, why like they thought well if it's no more than two why even say one um, and and then they they just, said consecutive did it say consecutive because they yeah. were they were just, they yeah. to be clear was but they just they didn't like that they wanted that cleaned up a little bit like if you're going to put a number on it put a number on it not one no more than two um, they also felt like maybe that was a little like restrictive um, for other events that might, whether it be a church festival or, or something like that. 
And then they recommended maybe even looking at making it conditional use. Before so, events. Mm -hmm. And that way it, it would be rather, you, with the conditional use, um, it, it wouldn't be in every event coming before the BZA. If, if the, you could, it could be a conditional use is a permitted use in a certain district. So you could limit it to whatever district you want it to be in, whether it be agriculture being you know, probably the largest district. So then you've got a conditional permitted conditional use. The applicant would come before the BZA, and the BZA can put conditions on it right then. So every event after that, they would never have to come back. A conditional use, though, is only good to the applicant. It's not transferable to the next owner or anything like that. But they can put the conditions on it right then, like, you know, this many days a year, from this time to that time, parking, whatever. All conditions can be put on it right then, and then the, the applicant doesn't have to reapply for every event. So they recommended maybe considering that. So those are some things that I think Zion Commission will talk about um, mm -hmm. in June, because we don't meet in May. So, mm -hmm. so that's how that went. Um, and then, oh, and also talking with Brian, um, he was going to let, I guess there's someone named Chuck, which um, you'd asked me about, Gina, um, oh. that we've been paying. I guess someone named Chuck's been doing minutes for uh, Charles Zion. Yeah. yeah, he's not going to do that anymore. He kind of didn't want to, and I told Brian I'd rather he not, because I'll just do my own minutes. So, so, that's, so he's going to let him know that. Uh, what else do we have? So the Zoning Commission meeting's coming up on the 18th. Um, and then I just had a couple technical questions being new here. Um, do you use the paper, the newspaper? How do you advertise for public hearings? Do you use the newspaper or do you use your website? We use the newspaper simply because, as we understand it, Ohio Revised Code still requires paper of general circulation. Does it? Mm -hmm. Mm. I thought we could use the, the website. I, I if you don't website. have access to any <coughs> any printed, oh, then you okay. can default to gotcha. other methods, and uh, not not describe other methods. And is your you're referring to her experience at Searville when you say you can? Yeah, we don't have any paper. Yeah, we, we uh, the trustees there just passed a resolution saying that all. Public hearing notices would just be posted on the website. So, okay, so what newspaper do you use here? Yellow Springs News. The Yellow Springs News. Okay, I'm not even familiar with that. Okay. <laughs> it's the, the editor. Of the <laughs> it's considered the top. <laughs> the top. The top <laughs> newspaper. <laughs> Yellow Springs. Okay. No, stay for well. their size <laughs> last year. Okay. Very good. Very good. And and I could probably find contact information online or something to yeah. if I have a public notice. Yeah. Um, yeah have copies already made up for you and insert things in. Perfect. Okay. And I wonder okay. you guys <coughs> have online advertising. If it's a print news figure as online advertising. We do. Um, we also have so I don't know public Chris. notices all go um, they go in print but they also go in a web database through the Ohio News Media Association. Oh, oh okay. Um, so okay. that is and I, I mean, I don't know if they're extricable. I think if you get one, you get the other. Okay. Oh, great. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, and then the, the only other thing I have is come, so once school's out here in June, I was going to come and, and spend some time uh, reorganizing the files, uh, the zoning files. I know there's kind of two here, one here, there. Um, and I want to kind of combine those. So. Great. Yeah. Looking forward to it. Yeah. So much. I'll be spending a little more time here once school's out. Okay, that's all. Any questions? Uh, you guys are busy permits? too. Let me tell you that you're very busy. Uh, permits? How many? In the so, last month. Wait, you say we're very busy? Yeah. Oh, I'm yeah. surprised. I know. Um, yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah, I'm surprised. Yeah. Really, just just uh, the one permit, but I've met with someone um, about a lot split proposed building that they want to do on a property. Um, I've been in contact with someone else doing a, a, probably getting ready to sell their property appraiser. Um, just lots of phone calls, lots of lots of activity. So it's people asking for information, clarification. Yeah. 
to move on to the next step. Yes. Yeah, I think we are probably going to be getting a BZA case um, for a, a lot split coming up. So we're wanting to build a second home on a property. So, but they have enough road frontage and acres to split. And, so, yeah. Okay, now you can look at our appetite. If they have road frontage and acreage, what are they um, asking for a variance on? Well, not a variance. A, um, oh, yes, variance. I'm sorry. Uh, they want to build, so they, they would put the house, the, the existing house by itself, and then keep the other, there's a pond in the back, pond 343. And they want to build a cabin-ish back there, approximately like 1,200 square feet, with two smaller cabins. 800 square feet for a, like a vacation site. Mm. Mm. They are zoned agriculture. Yeah, I don't. Yeah. I, I explained to them that Green County and requirements, and I didn't think that was going to fly. But and so I, I've said to them their options, like make it one. They have plenty of road frontage um, and acres. It's 24 acres. Um, and like 900 feet of road frontage. So plenty, they could just split the one unit that they wanted for like multi-families to be able to slot. So, but I think they are going to go ahead with asking for a Would that not be a commercial use also? Um, it would be private. It's for their family. They, they live elsewhere. But they want to. This is going to be their vacation. Vacation. Oh, okay, yeah. I understood that. Yeah. It's a no. Okay. And and so they want the kind of a larger it's cabin for right. them and two smaller ones for their kids. So we'll see. Exactly. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So I met with them last week mm -hmm. um, about answering some questions. And then we finally got the high high road. Uh, Various that was done in March finally got that lot split cleared up. We're gonna have some problems. The the BZA approved it one with 194 feet, one with 200 feet. Well, the doc the old existing deeds were wrong, mm. and there's only 184 feet left after they took 200, not 194. So mm. just a typo years ago, I suppose. So. Um, and then it's just trying to get it around the septic and then the existing barn and having the 20 feet, you know, side yard. But finally got that finished today and I signed that off. So, yeah, we're getting somewhere. Yeah. So, that's all. Welcome aboard. It's great to have you. Other, other questions aboard? Chairman, yes. Before we move on, would you consider um, allowing our new zoning inspector to leave the meeting after her presentation, considering her sizable mileage back to? <laughs> yes, um, I, I, I don't think there's any requirement that you uh, stay after your report. Okay, thank you. Like Jerome's no, required to stay. <laughs> Thank you. All right, thank you. Well, we have new business and old business. And uh, my sense is potentially two separate natures of executive session. That is, I've when you put this in, what's that was having to do with um, reporting the meeting with staff? Uh, that the, the one that they asked. Uh, <coughs> so that would be meeting trustees. Okay, so it's a personnel issue. Personnel issue, yes. Um, and the other is personnel compensation. And that is. What I'm, I'm saying, but do we need to be in an executive session to talk? Where is Denny? Did he signal anything about 
he left his keys, so he, he just, I think he had a message. Yeah. I, I heard his phone be up. No, his phone's right there. I don't know what he's um, Well, I brought up earlier that I, I wanted to pick up where we left off last three weeks ago about uh, firefighter retention plans. Uh, and you're talking about a specific case. And Danny's presence would make a difference. Looks like he'll be back. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. I would guess this fire department would be the worst one. Oh. I'm sorry, what did you? Oh. I would guess this fire department would be the worst one. expressed concerns about the specifics of executive sessions um, and I'm not quite sure how to approach this. Chief Bell's on his way back. Pardon? Chief Bell's on his way back. Concerned about throwing around specific numbers. Yeah. I, I would not like to do this in public. Okay. And I think it qualifies under a revised code to use an executive session to uh, to discuss it. Well, I would like to move into executive session to uh, discuss personnel compensation. Do we need a motion to do that? Also move. In a second. And I feel it's appropriate to have our chief with us. Returning to open session and we're committing to making a decision in two more weeks. Regarding uh, retainment uh, changes. You want to add anything to help? What's stopping you from making another decision two weeks after that? I mean, why would you just keep kicking why it down? Why would we wouldn't keep kicking it down? Yeah. This matter has been happening for how long now? Two months? Could I have your name, please? Uh, Nathaniel Ayers. Thank you. Um, I'm not convinced it's the right move. That's a stopping me. What, what's stopping you from saying it's the right move? Or even just making the a decision? The lack of analysis, any kind of uh, analysis that goes out more than 2024. Well, you the fact that I'm not sure if there are three EMTs is the reason. 
Well, you can't compare us to Sugar Creek or Beaver Creek or I'm any not. of those. Well, you have in previous meetings. I'm not. And, yeah, whatever. And I'm not convinced that, never mind, I'm not someone I can say in public. I, I will say, Are you doing uh, the last the session, session we've had, uh, We've come a lot closer to agreement, but we're not done. Well, we're not demanding pensions; we're demanding an answer because you have a lot of us stuck up here. Okay, what do I what do I need to do? Do I need to go out looking for jobs, or do I need to stay here and suck it up until we figure out a decision? Do you understand, young man, that you're talking quick. about doubling the number of career track positions in one fell swoop? That's fiscally irresponsible, and it's a very it's a decision that takes a lot of. So, a lot of analysis. And you're willing to put that forward before protecting the citizens of Yellow Springs in Miami Township. I don't. I think that's a that's a false equivalent. Because what's going to happen is you you guys are going to keep pushing. You don't this know further. what's going to happen. Yeah, you guys are going to keep pushing this further back, and you're going to start losing people. Okay. And you're not going to have enough people to run calls here. You're going to have to insulate yeah. it out. Yeah. Fear people. mongering. Okay. I'm not having it. That's not fear mongering. Yes. That's reality. Yeah. We're already in two. Two people a day on those shifts. If we lose one of them, there's one person a day. I'm not coming back in to pick up. I, I doubt clients don't come back in and pick up. One that's going to increase the overtime, and you know that. Yeah, it'll increase overtime. Yeah, it will increase overtimes, but. I, I would like to see more pension positions. I'm just not going to make a flying leap like this. Yeah, we'll increase the overtime. You have the overtime. The overtime won't even cost anywhere as near as putting three, four people in a pension with that 24 percent. You got so let's more do I hear this you. Is me holding it up. It's not. No, I just I have no faith in the board. No, that's what it is. I have no faith in the board, because this happened two weeks ago, three weeks ago, sorry, three weeks ago. Two it weeks was, we'll, we'll table it for another two weeks, and then two weeks before that, two weeks before that, three weeks before that. Well, I'm open to hearing from others. I, Trustee Moore, is it? Is she keep <laughs> stoning her head down? Oh, yeah, and where's our other trustee? Not even here, okay. Because he knows what's right. He's standing up for what's right. That's what you do. No, not what you speak. Because it's exactly that's why. Because we're voicing our opinion and it keeps getting shot down because you guys don't care what we have to say. So you got the man that's actually defending his people that work here and saying, Yes, I want these guys and I want protection for the township. But it's not you just you're not listening. It's not just pensions, it's coverage, it's people, it's staff. You know, the benefits of becoming a career a, firefighter. I think that's the benefits the, of becoming a career firefighter are having those options. And I think that's the future. You went and became a teacher, right? I, I think, I don't want to talk about You that. have a pension. Yeah, when I was 40 years old, I got a pension, okay? Okay. Are you getting so, a pension for being a trustee? I am. <clears throat> There's benefits to every job. The benefit of becoming a career firefighter is to have a pension. On top of just doing the job. And now we're not going to have people to do the job anymore. Share what you do. I'm open to more comments. Real quick, let's put it into reality. So what's going to happen is, I guess, like I was talking, people are already leaving and looking. I, you or a loved one, someone really close to you, say they live in the village, drop dead because they have a cardiac arrest. You get. One, maybe two guys, if this doesn't go through, and we're waiting on a medic that's, you guys say mutual aid's right next door. It's not. We have another medic coming 15, 20 minutes away, if they're even in service. So you have to think, okay, wow, I didn't want these guaranteed people on a day. I didn't want these full-timers shifted. Now I'm putting up with consequences. Okay, my loved one's laying here dead while I'm waiting for Cedarville's volunteers to get to the station to grab a medic to come to our call. That's the school's in session. Yeah. 
That there's and any gap. schools inside. That's correct, correct. Because no, 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 Cedar Hill no, 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 is yeah. mostly manned by the school uh, school students there. Yeah. So when when schools in session, they have a lot more people that will respond. But they have to leave their house, go to the station, wait for another person, wait for another crew to come back to the village to tend to our own calls that we can't handle. It's a service everyone in here pays for. But guess what? What if, what if we don't show up to that call? It's oh, okay. Where's the service I pay for at? Or, are there other factors that are that are affecting retention of people in recruitment? What do you mean? Are there any other factors that are affecting a career retention? position? Wait, oh. Are there any other factors that are affecting recruitment and retention at this station? I don't know. Well, the decline of the volunteers across the United States is a big factor, so we're not going to get volunteers here. Any others? And then the lack of benefits, like with of course the pension they're not guaranteed a pension if they're if they apply here so they're going to look at other places that say hey we're guaranteeing you guys yeah. a pension we hired from within yeah and so yeah i can tell you now we just took a call off a of rife road that lady literally told me i tried to get a hold of cedarville because i thought you guys were not staffed I said, and I tried to reinforce that we are staffed and that the trustees are doing right, that we're trying to up our staffing so that we can provide you with the best possible care. <clears throat> so, because she was like, yeah, she goes, I, I wanted Cedarville. I was like, well, you kind of don't have that choice. <laughs> but if you're watching the meetings on the videos and stuff, that looks like a lie. Like, we're not, we're, we're not moving forward at all. Keep pushing it back, pushing it back. There's no moving forward when we keep pushing something even further. Moving forward, be making a decision. This is what I want. This is what I want my people to have. Yeah, I mean, every, every time it's two weeks, it's two weeks longer before you get the pension and start your retirement. So I want to ask you. I've worked here five years, and I've been in Elton now, and I'm at the point where I'm looking, actively looking for other jobs. What's stopping you all from at least putting at least one of the EMTs onto the pension? Well, one of the things that's stopping me is a lack of a clear process of how it's done. We have a paramedic now who's on, on Bureau of Workman's Compensation that, that we're trying to determine if he's eligible. And if, and if he's passed up, I think that's grievous and possibly a grievance, you know. Um, I, I feel that I have felt that it, it's somewhat arbitrary. Um, I don't think we have a quite clearly worked out. I think that if you go into the pension, I'm not sure I'm really clear on whether for many years um, paramedic was the standard for the pension. And I know with this with this workplace now people are set, starting to say, well, we'll let some EMTs in and then okay, if we if we put EMT in the pension, then do we then do we um, give them a certain amount of time before they become a paramedic? And I just don't feel like, I want to put more people in career tracks, but I just don't feel like we have our systems. We don't even have a, a clear contract of how we would hold someone to that standard. And then I hear that when I talk to, have private conversations with someone, how important it is to have two paramedics on duty, and then their chief reports that no, we could get by with one, and I don't. And so I, I get all kinds of conflicting information about, and then about EMT versus per paramedic and our, and our readiness in that stage. And I just feel like our systems, like I want to buy ourselves some time so we can get clear promotion, clear guides on how to how to get promoted instead of just like how about this guy, this guy, this guy. I mean, that sounds insulting. I don't mean it that, that it's that random, but sometimes it feels that way. Like, what's what's the process for promotion? And I'm sorry, it's we're in a crunch, and it's not a good time to be taking the time to create process. But we ever create guys EMTs in the pension? There's plenty of departments that have EMTs. In the there pension. are there are starting to be some. There has been some. It's not starting. This has been going on for a while. We're town. We're a town. For one, we're a township. We're not. We're not a town. city. Yeah, Beaver Creek is a town. <laughs> it's, a, it's a gigantic town. It's a gigantic growing township. Still a township. Though. Yeah, it's what a gigantic growing township with a gigantic budget. 
Okay, well, look at Butler Township, look at Harrison Township, look at Jefferson Township. Those are all low income areas, but they still have EMPs in the pension. It's a gigantic, Harrison Township is huge. Yeah, but you also have to look at, okay, look at Actually, their Harrison Township is smaller than this township. In people? In budget? So, it just overall, they got more people, yeah, but it's all low income. I mean, Metadale High School, which is Dayton Public School, only graduated 22 people. <clears throat> and we're just arguing some of this is because I'm willing to dig it. Uh, I just want you to know. Well, you haven't gone that far. Mm -hmm. You haven't really done that much if we're still. Well, you're, here you're very waiting. wrong. You're very wrong. We, we've yeah. made. That you think I have made big progress. This and dug in. You're very well, like I said, you're still comparing us to New Jasper or Jasper Township. Like, you, you can't do that. You cannot compare us to a state, a department that runs half our call volume. Well, I'm glad this is the first I've heard folks. Maybe our structure should be different when we do hear more from them. Yeah, because most of the time we're told not to show up. Who tells you not to show up? Who tells you not that's to show why up? We ha that's why we haven't been here. Who tells you why not, not to show up? Seriously. You're when welcome. have you ever gotten the word to not show up? Because we didn't want to pressure you guys into making a decision. We want you to take your time and do it thoroughly. But now that you just keep pushing, it's been months since you guys have brought this up. Especially so if you're going to go and run into executive session every time we're here, then there's no public, True. there's no, there's no discussion no. between the board and the department. Mm -hmm. We don't see what you guys are seeing versus you don't see what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd be more than happy to sit down and discuss it. I'd, feel, I'd actually feel better if I could hear your guys' side versus you guys being in closed door. Were you, I've sat down with Klein and others you haven't sat down with anybody from a show it's always been Georgia and Klein or Brian mm -hmm. did you show up for a 15 and, minute truck check and who was with yeah. us that night don't talk to me I'm, about showing up with truck because <clears throat> I, I showed up to see what was going on to ESO and they shoveled me into a, a, a truck check a truck check with you oh, so you weren't even there to do that again okay. no it was great it was great yeah I'm, I'm done are you done Yes. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.